Hello and welcome. This is really an exciting event and I've been mentioning for a while on a couple of uh, social media platforms about some exciting news, major news, and you know, here at BD Baseball, you know, this has been a one-man operation for at least the last year, year and a half, but I'm really excited. Uh, you might know this guy. Uh, I'm, I know him pretty well myself personally from uh, Greater Kingwood, Texas, and Greater Houston, Mr. Tyler J. Beatty. Welcome aboard, Mr. Beatty. Well, what an honor. What an introduction. I appreciate that. <laughs> it, it, it tugs at the heartstrings for sure. I mean, the, the one-man operation for a year and a half, you've successfully... You successfully uh, launched BD Baseball into into good hands, and uh, I'm honored to be aboard. It's about time, right? Well, I think well, I, it is about time. I've been uh, I think I've asked every day for at least a year uh, while you were in uh, the Far East, uh, the land of the rising sun, and I'm excited that you know BD Baseball really takes on a new connotation because you know for all those families and all those student athletes. You know, there's so much hype and so much uh, fanfare with regard to uh, college recruiting. You and I see this as more of a guide, a guidance consultation, being able to explain to parents as well as student athletes all about the entirety of the process. So why don't, let's start there. Let's talk about what we what we did and the process that we started and some of the things you remember, you know, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth and you were uh, a <laughs> freshman in high school. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, yeah, I'm 30. So it seems like thinking back to 15 years, years ago or so, it does seem like dinosaurs had to have been roaming the earth. Um, no, I just, I mean, obviously it was um, like you used to say, it's do whatever you got to do for as long as you got to do it, whatever it takes mentality. And certainly the, you know, the things that we did, um, sort of the decisions that we made on a whim or that you made on a whim and, um, and just kind of the positions that you put me in to succeed uh, seemed so calculated, seemed like you had a sixth sense and an intuition. Um, and so you were ahead of, ahead of the time in a sense, because you just, uh, you had, a, you had these gut instincts or you just were well-versed and knowledgeable in what I needed to do personally to be not just successful but to just take steps forward and grow um as a baseball player and um and so that's really what to me when i look back at the process it really was like just like these like these calculated decisions that were always so smart whether it was hey let's start training at eric cressy's who's eric cressy what is he doing and kind of getting getting on board there. And um, just I could think about people that came into the picture and teams that I played for, uh, places that we were driving to or flying to. Um, just one thing led to another. Uh, and it was really a special process. And I think like when I think of working with families, like the way that you have been really for years and years, but the way that we will uh, work with them and guide them is, it's about educating them obviously like, hey, what do, they, what do they need to know? What can we teach them? What can you teach them? What can I tell them about my experience? And then the layer deeper is like, let's build a relationship and actually like connect with people and understand, you know, their wants, their needs, because like we could look at a kid and say, Hey, you want to go to Vandy, right? I can help you get into Vandy. But in the reality, it's like, Hey, no, I'm, you know, I'm actually from out West and I'd actually like to stay out West or I live in the Northeast and I kind of feel like a dream of mine is to play at Boston College or, you know, XYZ school. And so I think like the layer that people miss, you know, if they're in this particular industry or, you know, the people that they come across is like someone who actually cares about, genuinely cares about the family and the player. And uh, you've done that so well. I mean, gosh, you, the way that you connect with people. I mean, it, it it just shows in the way that they they speak about you and they rave about the way that you've guided them through the process with their kids. And so, uh, obviously, I felt that same way personally. Uh, and so, I'm excited about that and just allowing families to feel, you know, cared for and um, prioritized in this process that can seem like they get put on the back burner in a lot of ways. Well, I think the biggest part of this is 
that no one else really can actually uh, speak from is a we've lived this as father and son mm -hmm. b uh, a lot of the things that we've done they definitely translate into today's world with regard to you know the entirety of the baseball process meaning youth baseball that transitions into travel baseball that transitions into high school baseball and then subsequently for the select few college recruiting so this is more of guidance from father son that have done it arguably at the highest level and i remember very poignantly a discussion you had come in when we were living on Bryn Mawr, uh, and you came into the room uh, during one of the Mantown sessions and said, hey, look, my buddies are really giving me a hard time. All these letters coming in from Clemson and Coastal Carolina. Are you telling me I'm this good or am I really this good? Like, I need you to be my dad and not a baseball coach. And it was at that time that was like the Rocky moment. That was when WIT came into play for both of us and WIT standing the acronym, whatever it takes. And I think that's what you and I can offer to, to families and student athletes um, that A, want to learn more about the process, B, the reality um, of the ups and downs. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about that because, hey, I made a bunch of mistakes. If I had to go back in time, there's a lot of things I would... I would correct. I'd be less baseball coach and more dad. Um, but I remember you having the ups and flow, you know, ebb and flow. I don't throw hard enough. I need to throw harder. I'm trying to gain weight, but you've been keeping me on this caloric restricted diet to play <laughs> football. So yeah, talk yeah. about some of those things like, you know, let's talk about your journey and how it relates to, to the journey of today. It's no different other than the year being different, but you know, mm -hmm. baseball is a game of highs and lows. Yeah. I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said about, you know, sort of bringing reality into the picture for people um, and especially for me. And it was, you know, when you said, hey, you know, is this when I would ask you, is this, you know, is this legit? Like, do I have the talent and ability? And you would say, yes, you do. But more than that, you would say or you would put into action an opportunity for me to show to myself that I could do it, which was, Hey, let's put you on the Canes uh, travel team. Right. And then I go down to, to Georgia for my first time with the Canes and I'm playing with kids who are uh, a step ahead of me talent wise. And I, and I, I don't want to say I get exposed, but I do in a sense, like to the level of talent that I would need to step up to in order to, be at that level of capable, uh, cap capable of being like a division one player. And so I got to see with my own eyes, both where I was at in reality, like, Hey, here's where I'm at. I sat on the bench and I threw maybe one or two innings during that tournament. I was a cheerleader. I was a great teammate, but I realized I'm not at this level yet. And so I got back home and I knew the work that I needed to put in and the talent and, and, the, and the ways that I needed to grow in order to get there. And so just being able to to be put in that position was an opportunity for me to either back down and say, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to be good enough. I'm going to just kind of stay content with where I'm at. I'll be a great local high school baseball player. Maybe I'll go to a division two school or a division one school, lower level in the area and I'll be good. I'm happy with where I'm at. Or I can say, no, I know that I'm capable of being as good as these guys right here. Let's go get in the gym. Let's go get with a pitching coach. Let's go to the drawing board and see what I need to do to improve. Let's put on some weight, right? X, Y, Z. And so that was super important, not just your words of affirmation and, and encouragement, but also like, hey, let's go see what you got on, the, on a big stage. And, um, you know, for me, that was super important because I failed. Um, but I also realized that when there's failure, it's an opportunity for you to grow and pick yourself back up and improve. And um, that's super important because when you go through this process, people are going to want to sugarcoat to families. No, your son is, you know, he's good enough. He's going to, he's going to play on our team at this camp. As long as you pay $2,000, five, I don't know what it is, right? You know, he's going to get playing time. We're going to play in front of all these scouts. And then you show up and your son isn't the best on the team. He's riding the bench and you've paid all this money for, you know, maybe it's an experience like I had where he, he uses it to propel himself, but otherwise, are you just $2,000 in the hole for an opportunity where you were lied to, right? Or deceived or 
you know, put in a position where you thought it was going to be something other than it is. And so what I think you do a great job of, but we will do a great job of is like, hey, here's the reality. And how we're going to do that is here's an honest assessment of where you're at. And we're going to just give you honest feedback because the the other side of it is just it's it's not healthy, right? It's not healthy to engage in a relationship to help you guide along a, a process and say, hey, no, you're great, man. You can get into this school here's your guidance, right? And you just kind of like leave it at that and nobody's helping anybody that way, right? And so the biggest thing for me is discovering at an early age, as young as you can, as you start this process of who you are, what's your identity, what makes you tick, what kind of player you are in the reality of your situation, because that's the only thing that's gonna be able to carry you through as you go through adversity, as you experience success, as you get into the school that you wanna get into. It's like, who am I? Who am I as a player? who am I as a person? Who am I as a teammate? Who am I when I fail? Who am I when I succeed? And what we're going to be able to do is help you more than anything, see the reality of that, of who you are as a player and tap into some of the things of who you are as a person. And I think like more than anything, it'll help you in baseball, but it'll help you off the field as well, which to me is more important. Well, I think one of the great dynamics, you know, that you and I, kind of bring to the table for not only the parents and the student athletes, but, you know, their teams, their high school experience. This is a once in a lifetime trip for any uh, young uh, baseball student athlete. You only get to do this one time. And, you know, when you go through it, you're in a rush to get to your senior year, but you really want to embrace and enjoy the growth mode that goes along with from your eighth grade into your freshman year, you're starting to learn about strength training, nutrition, the benefits of sleep, you know, when to throw, how often to throw. Those are the things that we together can can kind of help families with. But one of the things I would really like you to discuss is there was a lot of growth mentally. You know, you talk about the transitions you made you know, high school, you changed, you went from public high school to a boarding school. You know, that's a big deal. You know, what are the benefits to that? You know, in today's world, everybody offers a postgraduate school. They're now baseball academies. But you went to a real academic, athletic, you know, boarding school. You didn't back up, but in hindsight, you might have. And then the other thing is, when you put that bullseye on your back, when you finally do achieve you know, some form of success, there's a burden that that kind of brings as well. So, you know, that to me is a really unique dynamic to, for us at BD Baseball that we can bring for, for parents and student athletes as far as understanding what it really genuinely feels like. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been in unique scenarios where it's it's almost as if we've dunked our toes in every experience that you can have as a youth baseball player, as a college athlete, into professional baseball. Um, yeah, just changing schools twice. In eighth grade, I went to a school where it was a junior high school so or a, uh, a high school where in eighth grade you can participate in varsity sports. And um, that in and of itself was a challenge. Um, just being able to, as an eighth grader, mature to the level of, the high schoolers that you're around in class or in the hallways and then on the does uh, the field as well. Um, and then as I transferred from my public school in Auburn to Lawrence Academy, my junior year, I didn't repeat that year because I felt like um, I was already well enough advanced. I wanted to stay young for the class that I was in because I have a May birthday. And so I felt like that was an advantage going in to um, potentially college and the draft. And so um it was it, for me, the transition academically was very challenging and, um, and athletically it was much needed to polish up the consistencies in my game. And, uh, the, that junior year was challenging. You know, I look back at transfer to Lawrence Academy and it was one that was another one of those years of tension where it was like, I just came off of a really good sophomore summer in the summer circuit. And I kind of made a little bit of a name for myself and then junior year, during the spring season, it wasn't sharp. I was, I was dealing with some, some injury stuff and uh, just my stuff wasn't, wasn't great. So there was another one of those um, sharpening seasonings seasons for me where it was like, Hey, what do you, are you going to just kind of, is this, are you going to fizzle out? Is your ability going to kind of be this or what are you going to do about it? 
and it was another one of those things where I felt it to motivate me rather than kind of push me down. And uh, I went on to have, you know, one of those one of those summers that we look back on and it seemed like a movie, just the things that we experienced, you know, kid from Massachusetts and going on to sort of have success against the, you know, the the powerhouse prospects in, in my class and even the class ahead of me during that summer and then get a scholarship at Vandy. And so, um, you know, as I went through a season of sort of growth and failure and adversity and then into a season of really that that next 18 months was uh, was sort of like a dream in terms of just feeling like I really had set myself up that the hard work was paying off. But the biggest thing that I did and that that helped me that senior year was say, hey, I'm going to enjoy this because I know that this is this is it. Right. Like when you think ahead of like what's after senior year of high school, it was either playing in professional baseball or going to Vanderbilt where it was going to be grind mode. Right. In a sense of like really hard academically and athletically and so I just enjoyed it like I just felt like I was really in a good groove I wanted to be a really good teammate and um and just enjoy it and so uh I think like looking back that was one of those years where or that span of 18 months where it was like I really knew who I was I really had a purpose and a plan for everything that I was doing and um and, and you know things on the baseball field you know translated well because of that well, I think the number one thing that both you and I can attest to is without a shadow of a doubt, every step of your journey, you know, there was, hey, are you having fun? Is this something, is this a place you you want to be at? Are you okay with this? And, you know, everybody thinks it's a linear progression, you know, but there were people that told you, uh, you know, you didn't throw hard enough. Uh, don't play football because you're going to get hurt and you're going to ruin your life and your career. And we always had that, Hey, this is, this is a one shot deal. This is a one time in your life. You want to play football, you play football, you want to work, you want to be better. And I called it the pit bull effect, meaning everybody thinks they're fast. But when you're getting chased by a pit bull, are you going to run faster or is that how fast? You always needed that pit bull to kind of come up and say, okay, I need to go to the next level. I need to go to the next level. And mm -hmm. I knew that. That's good. As a dad. And so that's something that we can share, I feel, that's very beneficial to the family. One of the final dynamics to this entire piece is for, for parents to understand, I'd like you to kind of share you know, we all talk college baseball, and I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of transfer portal, but college baseball is that ultimate mecca that everybody wants to talk about when their student athletes are in high school. Talk about how truly challenging the entirety, not just the baseball dynamic, but just the entirety of the college baseball experience, that transition from high school to college, if there's one thing that you and I are going to be able to do beyond anybody else's ability to do so is to truly explain what it looks like, what it feels like, what it sounds like. People can talk about it, but unless you've lived it like you and I have lived it, I don't think people can genuinely be prepared. So we can prepare mm -hmm. families and athletes for that, that biggest jump, which is high school to college. Uh, it, not only baseball, but all of the academics and the social and, and being away mm -hmm. from home. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's a greater part of the process that you need to be more prepared for than that transition into college life, college sports, academics. I will say, like, if we could have been there for ourselves or myself back when I was going into college, I mean, what the process, the experience would have been I wouldn't say that much greater because like it was an incredible experience, but it which I just would have been a little bit easier. Like getting in that first year would have been so much more smoother and easier. And I, it was really, really hard. And there are so many factors into that because oh, yeah. of my, because of the high school experience of being drafted and turning that down and really like to be candid, like I was so my mind for probably from about like, you know, I would say junior summer on through the draft, I was honestly in my mind, I'm going into pro ball. Like, I feel like I'm ready. I felt like I was polished. I was ready to make that decision. Uh, God had other plans, right? So he intervened and is like, no, I think this is where you need to be. 
Vanderbilt. And when I got on campus, I was not mentally prepared. I was not, you know, in a sense, not physically prepared because I hadn't played baseball during a fall before at that level. And um, just so many things across the board that I would go back and tell myself, right, that I look forward to telling other people and that I have told people before. Time management. You just need to be so locked in when you play high level college sports, college baseball, because of the class schedule, when you go from eight to one at the, in the, in the, in the uh, classrooms, and then you go from, you know, two to seven at the baseball field, and then from seven to nine in the study hall, and then you're trying to find time to be social and hang out with your teammates, get good meals in quality food. Um, that can kind of, you can kind of get ambushed by the college experience right away. And for some people, it's second nature. It's just something that's, that like they can kind of ease into. But for me, with the challenge of the academics and trying to be a good student and, and show up on campus as a, you know, a first round draft pick who's trying to live up to that potential and that name immediately in a high level SEC program like Vanderbilt, it had its challenges and I was not prepared. Um, and uh, and so, like I said, I think the most important thing is being prepared, knowing your routines, like I said, knowing who you are on the field and off the field, because it'll allow you to make easy decisions. It'll allow your time management to be smooth. I already know what I'm going to eat. I already know how I'm going to handle this situation uh, off the field. I already know how I'm going to prepare on the field and and um, it'll seem more s- seamless and smooth. Um And so that's what I can say about the early part of the college experience. And after that, it's really just a refinement year in, year out, day in, day out of uh, of your process of who you are, of how you're going to go about your uh, your day and um, and things like that. You know, so BD baseball, you know, here's what it means to me. To me, the ability for you and I to work with parents, to work with student athletes, there's one thing you know about Big Wall, it's the relationships. Like you, you would always, you know, I can talk to people from the West Coast to the East Coast to the Southeast. Heck, I lived in Louisiana, uh, you know, for six years while you were in school and made yeah. that, you know, so our relationships, your relationships, my relationships together, uh, you know, we can genuinely pick up phones and talk to people, which is what I do. I, I don't email people coaches and say hey we have this student app that's not what we do and we're not a recruiting service this isn't about recruiting this is about guidance in all facets of preparing a student athlete from the eighth or ninth grade all the way through what's important more importantly what's not what's worth your time what's worth your money you know we just talk a little bit about the things uh, that you feel with regard to the relationships that we can bring to the table for families, that is critical for this whole process to be successful. Would you agree? I, I agree. I mean, I think that what you're what you're telling me is that we want to offer families the answers to the test before they walk into the classroom. I mean, Access. Access. sign sign me up as a student who has struggled <laughs> testing. If you gave me the answers ahead of time, I'll tell you what, I would have been a little bit more confident and I would have walked in the room with my chest held up a little bit out. But um, and no, candidly, like we yeah, we, we have, you know, experience, like you said, like we've walked through almost every experience that you can that you can potentially have. At least I have individually and then Walt has, you know, with either other families or himself, um, you know, having been a coach, having been you know, a a dad to me and a guide to me throughout my experiences. I mean, the relationships, thankfully, that we've gotten to have and connecting with people, it's uh, the Rolodex that Walt has. I mean, is probably, you know, the the numbers that he could scroll through on his contact list is is impressive. Uh, It just shows, I guess, by the guests that he has on the podcast. But, um, you know, in terms of connections and and the the people that we have, it's, it's both like a testament to the way that we've connected with people over the years, but also a testament to the genuine, um, you know, baseball knowledge that we have and that Walt has because people respect, you know, his, your opinion, Walt respect experiences that I've had and the, the paths that, you know, we've all had, you know, been able to cross with and everything like that. And so um, I think just knowing that we can help programs, but also that we can help families 
with the way that we just genuinely care for people. I mean, it, it really comes down to when someone, you know, if I were to reach out to someone and, and uh, I wanted a mentor and I wanted someone to mentor me, it, you know, the information that they have is important, right? But also it's, does this person like genuinely care about pouring into me and, and giving me quality time to where I feel like there's an investment? You're going to make the people who work with us and they and they want to have us as as their guides personally through their process with their their son and their family they're going to make an investment they're going to say hey i feel as if these people can help me i'm going to invest in my son's career and um and it might seem like that you're the only one making the investment but actually we're both making an investment and we want to invest our time and our genuine uh, amounts of, of knowledge and and uh, care level for your families and so um it's it's really just like knowing where you are and have being uh, having been in your shoes before for me it's like the things that i went through that were hard i want other people to not have to experience that level of difficulty now there will still be trials and things that you have to walk through and we will be able to light a path forward that doesn't make you feel like you're walking through it blind and um, and unable to see the way out or the light at the end of the tunnel. We'll be able to provide, like you said, like I said, the answers to the test. We'll be able to light the path and show you that there is, um, you know, a lot to look forward to on the horizon. You know, one of the things I really want to get across is I'm tremendously proud of the journey that Tyler has, has undertaken. It, you know, there in no way can anyone as a parent ask for more with regard to his heart, his mind, his body. Um, you know, it's heartbreaking as a parent, uh, you know, to be able to watch when your student athlete is struggling and that's your, that's our son, you know, and I think it's really important to understand that nobody loves the sport of baseball more than Tyler or, or, or myself. But the number one thing that I wanted to do as a father, as a parent, was to get Tyler to understand that trading athletic ability. And, you know, he was a great football player, great basketball player, a lot of decisions to make. But trading that athletic talent and ability for academic excellence, to be able to say I'm a Lawrence Academy graduate and a Vanderbilt graduate and I have degrees from both of those schools and now, you know, chasing or going uh, forward with regard to a graduate degree, all of that can be attributed to the sport of baseball. So this is more about trading the ability for the opportunity to better your life as, as men, as potential husbands and parents and people within the business world. And I think both Tyler and I, and obviously you can speak to this fact, Ty, that's really where we're coming from. This is I'm so tired of all of the parents dealing with recruiting services, recruiting services that promise to get you in front of coaches. It's not about being in front of coaches. It's about being prepared for the entirety of the strength training, the academic uh, time management piece, uh, you know, the expectation piece. Those types of things are really uh, a part of a childhood. You know, you get one shot at childhood, eight to 18, and then you have to become a man in college. And I know that you want to kind of end on that and talk a little bit about when you're in college, it's a sport played by men, coached by men. There is no gray area. You either can or you can't. You either did or you didn't. And those are the expectations, whether you played for me at Becker College in Division Three, uh, or you played for Tim Corbin at Vanderbilt and you win a World Series uh, at the Division One level. Just a little bit about that kind of that crossing over from childhood high school into being a man on a field of play with fans and social media expectations. That's a big part of this process as well. Yeah. I mean, I think that's when the game becomes incredibly serious and uh, I want to say more business-like because, you know, the result matters, winning matters, not that it doesn't when you're younger, but, uh, on the level that it it does um, it does change a lot the expectations and uh, the pressure that you feel both from others and that you put on yourself to succeed to succeed for a specific program 
um, that's either succeeded before and you just want to kind of continue to carry the legacy. Um, and so, yeah, you, you have to take a greater responsibility in that. And there's a fine line that you toe in that. And I think for me, what I learned is even though it's a greater responsibility and, and the expectations rise for yourself, you still need to remember that the game is the same. It's obviously the same game. The field is the same dimensions. You're throwing a ball. Uh, obviously, the the talent of the other players around you is 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 higher and heightened. Situations are heightened in terms of when you say pressure. There's more people in the stands. There's more on the line. Uh, you're playing in front of people on TV. But when you allow that to rise and uh, amount to a burden on you, then the game can become not as fun. It can become very challenging, and you can begin to have performance anxiety which i'm sure kids feel at a much younger age now than any any time before and so the game the importance of keeping the game i don't want to say small but in perspective is so vital and um i think you know both you know the pressures of social media now that they have from a young age hey here's a you know here's a uh, here's a 12 year old he's a 2020 2032 class and he's throwing 78 to 80 and you know whatever it is and and you're looking at the screen and you're comparing yourself to them and so there's a rabbit hole that i can go down there but it's just the the comparisons the the pressure that you feel at a younger age is hard it's harder to to um to put in perspective and to understand and so i will say the game of baseball can teach you so much. It could teach you about how do you interact with other people being a teammate, how you interact and handle failure and adversity because it is a game of failure. Uh, how you handle success. Do you remain humble? Do you have an ego? Uh, how you can be coached. Um, but ultimately, like as you were referring to before, it's just a breeding ground to grow as a man, um, to go from a boy who played a game to a man who's playing a game, but who understands himself understands what the game can provide him like you said as an opportunity to to get an education to go to a school that you might not have gotten into because uh, without uh, of having baseball as a, an opportunity for you to meet kids from not only around the country but around the world um, and to play a game that is obviously fun to play uh, but to draw from it to draw from it things that will allow you to grow as a person and Vanderbilt taught me that it was, you know, when I stepped foot on campus, I thought it was going to be all academics and sports, but it was human development at its finest. Corbs would sit us down in the classroom and he would teach us how to be great men, great husbands one day, great fathers one day. And I look back now that I'm a father uh, and a husband for six years now, and I see the things that he taught me and I see the way that the game of baseball has shaped and molded me into the person that I am today. And it all is stemmed from the experiences that I've, that I've had in baseball, the people that I've crossed paths with, uh, the way that you've raised me, the way that you, um, you know, took me through my process and my experience in baseball. And um, it's just important that people don't, you know, I think when people reach out, it's, it's, there's probably a, a very strong sense of baseball is all we have right now. Let's, we have this one opportunity, which is probably true. We have this one chance. Let's make this right. And the, the, the focus there is so centered on, I need baseball to work out. Baseball will be baseball. It'll work out how it works out. There is some control that you have over the experience and the process and the outcome. But ultimately, let baseball try to draw from the game these ways in which you will grow and look back on and say, I'm so thankful for baseball, not because it, it got me into this school um, or I got into pro ball or whatever it may be, but like, because of the people that I met, because of the way that I grew, because of how I know now know how to handle adversity or whatever it is, um, we can allow you to sort of get into that process and that mindset earlier and just see those things more clear so that you don't look back and say, gosh, I really wish I just enjoyed that part of the process and and understood what I was what I was in for or what I could have gotten from it. And um, that's my hope in this is that people can look back and say, Oh, like I actually thought I was getting into it for this, but I got so much more out of it than that. And that's what we're going to do at BD Baseball. And, and I am thrilled, beyond thrilled, that this is an experience that I can work with, be a part of with you. Uh, I think it's going to be invaluable uh, for families and parents to be able to see 
the relationship, learn from the things that not only that we did right, but some of the things that mainly I did wrong and would have done differently. And, you know, this is an experience, again, that we can share. Some of the people that I've worked with individually while Tyler was growing up, they're in their 30s. In fact, Keith and Kevin Reno just got into their high school Hall of Fame. They're married now, and you remember them. They were a big part of your childhood when I was coaching at Becker. They were elite baseball players. I helped them go from Becker to Franklin Pierce, and Keith went on to play professionally. I have a lot of boys from across Louisiana and Texas that are now in their 30s. Um, you know, They've had successful college careers, but are now husbands and parents. Uh, and, you know, obviously Tyler now a, a parent to uh, Bo Diesel, who took his first steps today. Uh, oh. And so these are the things that we're going to be able to work with uh, families across the country. So, Ty, thank you for uh, joining the joining the uh, the Beatty Baseball family. Uh, I'm excited. I hope you as uh, parents and student athletes watching are excited. Anything else you'd like to add here, uh, Bubs, before we, uh, say good night? Oh man. Uh, I guess I'll wrap it up, put a little bow on it. No, I, I will say, uh, um, no, no pun intended. <laughs> exactly. No pun intended. Um, I will say, no, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, the, the opportunities ahead and doing this with you. I think, um, as I've said, and I've heard from so many people, is just the wealth of knowledge that you have, uh, the relational skills that you have, the ways that you've helped. Other, whether kids, kids will reach out to me and they'll say, hey, your dad's helped me so much. Um, I'm just so thankful for how he's helped me and the things that he's, you know, uh, opportunities he's, that he's provided me with and the guidance that he's given me. You know, it seems like all the time I get messages like that. And so um, I, I think just like as a son, you know, like you re like you referenced, you know, the ways that we experienced some things growing up and the way that you handled some experiences were all just out of instinct and in how you would do them. And, and were they the right things to do? Were they the wrong things to do? Who's to say? It all turned out great. So it's it's not to say that anything that you did was wrong. And uh, I will say like the, the, the pride that you've taken in, like I said, I don't want to say correcting your wrongs, but just the way that you've you've learned and you've developed different uh, understandings of the game and how to go about certain experiences as a coach and as a dad and to see you want to pass that knowledge on to other people makes me extremely proud and um and just excited and and uh excited for other families that get to experience that because you are someone who has already had a wealth of knowledge in this game uh already had a lot of connections but you continue to refine that you continue to to try to take the next steps and how you understand the game, how you understand the different facets of the game, the ins and outs, the mindsets that you have to have, um, the father son relationship, the mother son, whatever it may be, uh, those, those small intangibles, you've taken a lot of pride in understanding those, uh, maturing in those and just like being able to help other people in that. And so to me, I am, uh, both proud of that, that you've done that, and also just excited for these families to reap the benefits of everything that you've learned over the years, uh, because it really is invaluable. I mean, if I could have put a value on the things that you've helped me with growing up, I mean, it's, it's, it literally is invaluable. I mean, it's, uh, I guess, I guess there's a lot that I could say about that, but I will say that the people who will be able to have access to working uh, with you, with us, and being able to hear your guidance, um, they're going to be set up for success on and off the field. And I'm excited for them, and I'm excited to be doing this with you. So I want to let parents know, BDBaseball.com. It cannot get any simpler than that. We'll be adding to the website. You can find out a lot about us. Uh, you can learn how to work with us if you're so inclined. Baseball Life for 11 on social media, Twitter and TikTok. Tyler Beattie uh, on, on Twitter. Not as active on social media, but Instagram. What's your Instagram? It's the same thing. Yeah, at Tyler Beattie. At Beattie. Tyler Beattie. That's B as in boy. E as in Edward. E as in Edward. E as in Edward. E as in David. E as in Edward. E as in Edward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is an E at the end of it, so that's why it's Beattie. It's not Bead. And so, folks, I'm really excited uh, Ty, I'm looking forward to uh, to joining forces and father and son uh, in the world of baseball. Can't ask for much more than that. Love you, Captain. And uh, 
If you have any questions for us, put them down below. We'd love for you to begin to spread the word about the YouTube channel, the Coach's Corner segment. Ty and I will be talking about things like pitching, pitching preparation, baseball mental process. We'll talk to college coaches. We'll talk to players. This is everything and anything to do about baseball from the age of six all the way to the big leagues. We've been there. He's done that. And we're going to be able to share that with you. So give us a like, because the more you like our content, the more the YouTube and the algorithms of social media promotes and gets us in front of other families and student athletes. Go ahead and subscribe and don't be afraid to tell people about us. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Tyler would love to become a social media celebrity. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much, my good man. I, I love you. And uh, we will talk with you by any means necessary, email, social media, direct message, follow along. We look forward to sharing our baseball love and passion with you. Have a great night, everybody. Mm.